So our next guest is Sherry Healy, who uh, was originally scheduled for last week, but had to drop out at the last moment. Sherry, welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh, this is what were... the internet's supposed to be about. Thank you. Yeah, this is, these are exciting times. Yes. Um, so you are from Clackamas County. Yes, I am. And Clackamas County has been undergoing some vast changes politically over the past couple of years. That's right. So just to put it in context, I have a slide that shows uh, where where Clackamas County is on the big map of Oregon uh, amongst the 36 counties. And then the, the, <laughs> the major, um, it looks like the major thing in, in Clackamas County is Mount Hood. Uh, right. it's, 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 it's kind of um, east of the freeway going over into the middle part of the state. That's correct. And then I have a slide that shows the, the voter registration. So uh, again, the Democrats have a clear majority in Clackamas County, which I thought was surprising given who you've elected as county commissioners in recent years. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it's, go ahead. It's, yeah. No, people are surprised that the demographics are changing, I think. I'm trying to see on your, are you showing that it's almost 50-50? Um, uh, the, of the... Uh, the third and fourth columns are non-affiliated voters and, oh, right. and Republicans. Right, that's huge, right. And so you have a, but you have so many voters, so it's just. Yeah, it, it's it's a, a, to run a campaign on this something this scale it, from the grassroots, it's challenging. So thank you for having this opportunity again. So what position are you running for? So I'm running for Clackamas County Clerk, and uh, that's, a position down the ballot that few people pay attention to. And um, I've been kind of horrified because people kind of uh, have undervalued the very importance of the county clerk's race. It's, it's a paramount importance because that's where our ballots are collected and tabulated. It's our first line of defense for our election integrity. I've been an election integrity advocate for over 15 years. I've spent countless hours in county clerk's offices knowing uh, they're instrumental for making decisions that impact how our ballots are collected or, or tabulated. And um, I, I, this is, I've been working the outside all these years, and this is an opportunity to work from the inside out. And um, there's other vital functions as well. So we've had um, instances where people barge into the counting area and, um, uh, are disruptive. Have you had that experience in Clackamas County? Uh, not to my knowledge, it's very civil, but my um, concern with uh, the observational capacity of our citizens is that, what are you observing? You're behind a glass a window and the tabulation happens maybe six feet away and you see people feed paper through a machine that proves nothing. So I've been advocating for risk limiting audit I actually work with activists since 2006 that got that implemented just recently in Colorado, not here. They're also a vote by mail state. And I um, told Ron Wyden, I asked the, the office, please add risk limiting audits to our paper, to his national paper ballot bill. And he has. What else? Um, the, the sad fact is that the election code we have on the books now, I helped co-write with the Oregon Voter Rights Coalition back in 2006. Only a very small portion got implemented and we want to finish the job, which is why Bill Bradbury has endorsed me because he recalls from back in the day how we used to have nothing um, to confirm that the ballots, which are magnificent, we, are, we should be so proud we have the all important paper ballots, but they do go through OptiScan technology and we know for a fact, even though those machines can be disconnected from the internet and uh, we do a magnificent job looking at for voter intent and we buy some of the systems have um, memory cards that you can buy right off the shelf. Despite all those mitigations, we still know that they can be hacked and insiders do know this fact, but, the, but for years we've been told by the DNC and others, be quiet because um, at the end of the day, you just have to trust your election officials. Well, I never thought that was a good way to perpetuate our democracy to have a trust-based system when it can be so easy to have a scientifically verifiable system. And so that 
uh, the election code we have now almost rarely ever looks at our ballots. That's what people don't realize. They think that we're looking at the paper. We're not. We're looking at the machine tabulation. There's quite a few things we can do right away that are virtually free. And that's what I'm advocating. So I'm a big election integrity person, but I also don't devalue all the other very important jobs and those other skill sets. That's what I've been doing for my living my whole life. So I can go into those as well. But um, there's so much that we, the, the thing about Oregon that people don't maybe perhaps understand is that the nation is looking at us to be a model for vote by mail. And I know we could make best practices in Clackamas that would inform the entire state and also the nation. And it takes people from, it, it, it doesn't come from anyone but people who are nerdy enough to have been pursuing this for so many years and understand that it's not even just a tabulation. There's a lot of things in our chain of custody that we need to have uh, best practices improved upon. And so that, that's my, um, how I'm going to be different than your generic county clerk. Because this day and age, we need something more than our old style county clerk that was just the administrator, custodian of records, and, which is so important, and um, you know, recorder of deeds and all the other functions. The new county clerks, I am advocating the idea that we have to start putting election integrity people who have a clue about where to spend our tax dollars and, and um, improve the system in a meaningful, impactful way. And nothing can be more important than that because all the things we're doing running campaigns and, you know, in shows like this, if at the end of the day, um, our systems are only as strong as their weakest link and we need to address, uh, make sure that everything's so ironclad that we can really have confidence in our vote in a scientific, verifiable way and not just a trust-based way. I was so glad to hear you talk about chain of custody because we had an incident here uh, a couple of years ago that, um, you know, you don't even think about things like this going wrong. Um, but there was, you know, we were a, a huge county uh, yeah. with um, a lot of uh, ballot boxes spread around. And <clears throat> there was a rumor going around that uh, the ballot box from one of our towns disappeared uh after the election that night and didn't arrive until later that morning. Um, and no one would verify that that was actually a true rumor. I went out and, and uh, uh, I took the data of who voted. And statistically, the, uh, there were people who always voted in elections who did not turn in a ballot. And this was one of the really close elections. And mm -hmm. it's possible that, that uh, one of the scenarios is that someone had, had taken the, the ballot box and removed a bunch of ballots and then turned it in and, and uh, changed the results. Well, we know the history of elections. There's so much at stake. You know, it's a classic motives for crime, transfer power, um, money. Um, so to think nowadays that those things have disappeared would be preposterous. In the old days when we had precinct voting, we know we heard stories about you know, ballot boxes being stolen. And that's why we made um, po policies where you post the tally before they leave the premises. So there's a lot of really easy things that we can do to really make our system ironclad instead of just everyone buying into the urban myth that the system as it stands now in Oregon is sacrosanct. Because it can be, but it, it you know, we just need to finish the job. And one is I'm advocating for risk limiting audits, as I said, that's just looking at a statistical sample that comes out the other side that's truly random. Our ran um, I won't go into what's the deficiencies of our current election code. Uh, that's a whole long story that people think is um, going to protect them. And it's just so very small that it's not adequate. For instance, our recount, automatic recount is only 0.002, uh, a margin of victory tighter than 0.002 that is so small you can easily have a hacker write around that and then the other is uh only in the general election the secretary of state will look at a kind of like a risk limiting audit that we were recommending way back in the day to uh, just the top of the ballot a statistic uh, a random sampling but the code says the random sample 
is uh, determined by the Secretary of State and three people. It's not spelled out enough. Obviously, any statistical sampling is only as good as it's random. And the fact that it's only a general election, only two races, uh, so much is determined in the primaries and all the other races. And also the fact that that one has a huge security hole in it. So, I mean, that's why we, if once people have awareness of all these tedious little details, we can easily fix them with legislative remedies. And I actually had some on the platform. And I am the chair of the Democratic, uh, the Demo the Election Integrity Caucus of the Democratic Party of Oregon. And that's been a great opportunity to push for legislative remedies from that side of the equation. But yes, I'm a Democrat, but I grew up as a poor Republican. And my whole goal is to make sure that our election systems are so secure that it won't matter what anyone's party affiliation, whether it be a Machiavellian millionaire who can buy a hacker or, um, you know, a nation state or, you know, a teenager hacker, anybody or the insiders that work within the election office. And there, so that's my dream. And my vision is to make our uh, election division of Clackamas County a model for the nation. Excellent. Betsy, were there any questions on the line? Yeah, Julie Loved 101 asked, uh, said that there's a New York judge that just ruled ballots are public property and so yes. public uh, needs to be able to view. Can you explain the Oregon, you know, what right. Oregon does? So this is something that I tried to get through in the Democratic platform and it was not passed, unfortunately, because I don't think there was enough information to it and for people to grasp what it's about. But basically, I love this guy, John Brakey in Pima, Arizona. He's been working for years on this concept of uh, when, we, when it, so stepping back for one second, when we put our ballots through this um, OptiScan technology, few people realize that those ballot images are what we are counting, right? So if we just take those, um, just just metaphorically, let's say thumb drive, we take the them off of thumb drive, the early memory cards, we can have c copies of that, and it would truly democratize our our um, tabulation process because any group say, you know, progressive Oregon or any constituency group that is concerned about the tabulation could go within their group and count it themselves. And then we would have a real basis for a uh, recount because few people realize when we go, they think, oh, we can go to the court and get a recount. No, you cannot because you have to go to a judge and get permission. You have to have legal basis. And then it, then it goes to the if you are so lucky to even get that, then you pay a lot of money. Look what happened to Jill Stein's campaign, by the way, that was trying to do this and what an enormous uh, roadblocks were put in her way. But then it goes to the, if you were succeed and have the money and win the court, then it goes to the secretary of state and the secretary of state, then the election code says that um, it, he, he, she must do it in the most expedient, cost efficient manner um, possible. So in other words, it's almost impossible to get our hands on the paper ballots. But these ballot images are the remedy because we could just get a copy of them. So what happened is, and they're anonymous images, by the way, that's very important key because people tend to think, oh, it's privacy of the ballot that's keeping us from getting them. No, it's not. And he's been winning state by state. And now the last was um, a huge legal precedent set in uh, New York state where they are saying that that um, can be part of the public domain because the excuses to not let us have copies are preposterous. And just say, for instance, if Progressive Oregon or whatever group um, came up with a, a different tally, then you could have another group that could counter that. But in, in the end, we would have... Um, it's not to say that the, what the, the private groups say is the end of the, of the day, but at least we would have the evidence that we don't have now because... Right now, we have proprietary software where we have no methodology to actually uh, have the information we need to counter any of the decisions that come out of those machines. And, and that's just not acceptable, and it, it's really easy to fix. And, now, and th that was one of the three things that we could do, is just give people access to those um, copies of the machine, the images, to any group that wants them come in with your memory card and, and duplicate it. And they're right on the machines now. In fact, Clackamas County, I asked them, 
do you have those? And they said, yes, they do. And I said, so what do you do with them? And they said, they just leave them on there until a next, uh, until they run out of memory and then they override them. And <laughs> that's ridiculous. So that's just a simple thing we could do right then and there. Um, if you have the knowledge to understand that that's possible, then you can promote that. And I have some other ideas too that are actually very cost effective that would make meaningful observation of the tallies um, have consequences instead of us just passively watching things happen from afar that mean nothing. I hope that makes sense. It's very tedious. I go into all this tedious, nerdy detail, but it's so important. And it's not, and I feel if people are bored to tears by it, I will do all that boring stuff. I will be advocating, <laughs> open your eyes and ears on the inside, doing all this stuff for you and making and pushing for remedies in our, uh, for our legislators to, from the observation I see from the inside, because I don't have all the pieces. Some of that is written in uh, administrative code that, um, for largely is unenforceable because few people have an, the awareness or the the knowledge that those things even exist and they're not made public. So that's another long-winded thing that I could be doing. <laughs> it's like too many details, but there, I, there's so many. There's other very important parts of the job that I'm qualified for, and I can go into that if you like. But was there any other questions, Betsy? Uh, that was it. Sherry, I, I adore your passion and your integrity, and thank you so much for running for this office. Thank you. I thank you for making this happen. This is what real democracy, democracy is all about. Thank you. So go out there and, and finish your canvassing, and good luck in your election. Yeah, that's what I'm doing today, canvassing. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, bye. Oh, yes, John. Uh, how can people help? Sherry, does she have a campaign site? Does she need help with canvassing? Yes, I do. That, thank you for asking. Yes, I, my website is HealyCounts.org. And today I, I have uh, people canvassing for me and we need more because at the beginning we saw how huge Clackamas County is. It's, it's daunting. You know, it's, that's everything, getting out the boat today. What was that site again? Say it again. Oh, HealyCounts.org. Thank you so much. Thank you.